Now move on, uh, as we move on into a new month, let's take a stock of how market have fared out in the month of October over the last 10 years. Indices, stock and sectors are comprehensive analysis. Let's take it across to Ashesha, who will put, into, uh, who will put things into perspective for us. Ashesha, over to you. October, in fact, is the month which has shown strongest seasonality over the last 10 years. First up, let's talk about individual sectors and how they've performed. Uh, Nifty has given an average return of about 1.7% over the last 10 years. We have Nifty Mid-Cap Index, average return of 2.1% and Nifty Bank Index. In fact, this has bucked the trend with an average return of about 3.9% over the last 10 years. Nifty ended in the green in 8 out of the last 10 years. Nifty Mid-Cap 9 times and Nifty the banking index has ended in the green 9 out of the last 10 times. Let's also talk about individual sectors and how they have performed. Uh, PSU banking index is bucking the trend with an average return of 7.3% followed by private banks, 3.7% average returns. We have financials, auto and real estate with average return anywhere between 27 to 3.5% in the month of October. Only two sectoral indices have ended or rather have given an average negative return. FMCG index which has given a negative return of half a percent, IT index which has given an average negative return of about 0.3 percent. Let's also talk about individual stocks and we've picked up five, five stocks which have closed in the green at least eight out of the last ten times. We have Canada Bank average return of about 13 percent, Delta Corp and TVS Motor average return of 10 percent, ICICI Bank and NMDC have given an average return of about 8 percent over the last 10 years. Let's also talk about the losers then. We have picked up three stocks which have closed in the red in at least seven times out of the last 10 years. Vodafone Idea, average negative return of 6%, followed by Astral and Biocon which have given negative return of 3%. But yes, October has proved to be the strongest month when it comes to seasonality and index returns have also been quite decent. All right, then there you have it. So that was a comprehensive take coming in on October seasonality. Time for a very quick breather. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying tuned into your trades. And as promised, we'll of course be going to the big story of the day in a bit. But let's take a look at the derivatives roundup and see how that is shaping up. When you take a look at the September expiry, when you take a look at the trend then for Nifty, you're looking at a largely flat trend coming in for the Nifty. But when you take a look at the Bank Nifty as well, there's some mild short buildup that was also observed. Let's also take a quick check on what the India VIX was up to because it was around those 12 levels. And what you did see is that it did crack about 6.2% and that's the kind of move that you saw coming in on the India VIX as well. Let's also take a look at active call levels for 3rd October expiry then. When you take a look at call writing, that was observed at 25,800 as well as 25,900. And it was interestingly the 25,900 level that was also forming a strong resistance level. So that was what the active calls pictures looks like. But when you take a look at the active puts as well, put writing was also observed at 25,700 as well as 25,600. So at this point, this is how the derivatives roundup is shaping up like. All right, so seems like uh, not uh, much damage done. Uh, lower strikes have not been uh, gone into writing much. Uh, similar trend what we saw yesterday also. But then yes, of course, we are spending some time here. Moving on, RBI has observed several irregular practices by gold financiers and, then, and now asked them to review their policies and also undertake a portfolio review. My colleague Varun joins in with all the details on this. Varun. So in the past we have seen uh, uh, RBI is actually closely monitoring the gold loan companies and the loan given by these companies and now RBI has come out with you know several observations where they say that there are irregular practices in gold against basically against pledge of gold ornaments and jewelries and there are shortcomings in use of third parties for sourcing and an appraisal of gold loans also there are irregularities in undertaking valuation of gold without the presence of customers there are issues with due diligence lack of end use monitoring of gold loans and also loan to value ratio and incorrect application of risk weight so these are some of the issues which rbi has highlighted on gold financing companies but brokerages have a different view they say that this would definitely lead to some slowdown in gold loan 
that is expected because this uh, because of the shake action or the observations by RBI, but they think that the entities with lesser vintage in lending against gold jewelry could likely have more deficiencies and companies like Mutut and Mandapuram which have been regulated by RBI for many years, they are likely to be positioned better. There might be some risk and there might be overhang on the stock because of this news, but uh, they still are comfortable with these companies and between the two, they think that Mannapuram would have a good safety of mar a margin of safety. Jeffrey say uh, that the traditional gold loan financiers like Mutut and Manna fin uh, Mannapuram Finance, they have been audited by RBI periodically and they have very fewer gaps. Also, when it comes to IFL Finance, they say that it should be unaffected because they have already taken corrective measures. So, the listed gold loan companies, no doubt they would have an overhang, but more, most of them are good, uh, highly regulated by RBI and there are periodic checks which have been done. So, if there are issues, there might be with the entities which have letter, lesser vintage in lending against gold, but yes, there would be overhang on all the gold financiers, at least for today. Well, absolutely. Thanks, Varun, for that lowdown on gold financiers. It was Muthut Finance as well as Manapuram Finance that were under pressure. But there was a whole host of counters that were buzzing away in trade. The likes of Star Cement, Greaves Cotton building on to those gains. Gaurav is standing by for that entire list. Gaurav? Well, yes, Star Cement is going to be in focus because one of its subsidiaries has been declared as a preferred bidder for limestone reserves in the Rajasthan. Now, these blocks will have capacity of around 64 million tons of limestone. As a result, we saw some uptick in this counter. Next, we have is Greaves Cotton because the Greaves, one of its subsidiaries which deals in electric three-wheeler three, three vehicle, has now partnered with Sriram Finance and they will offer customers tailored financing services. As a result, we saw some uptick in this counter as well. Next, we have is Century Textile because Birla Estates, Trimaya, Phase 2 project in Bangalore has now achieved almost 95% of the inventory sellout in the 24 hours of the launch and they have achieved almost 600 crores of booking value. They say that the project is anticipated to give revenue estimate around, of around 3000 crore rupees in a few coming quarters and as a result we saw some uptick in this counter as well. Next we have is ABB India because now IIT Bombay has partnered with ABB India to, uh, to set up a state of the art electrical machines and drivers lab. As a result we saw some uptick in this counter as well. And lastly let's also focus on PB Fintech because Jefferies has now maintained its buy rating and a target price of 1800 rupees on this counter. What they say is that the management has now quantified that they will be investing not more than 100 million dollars in the new business and they the clarification actually addresses the concern of investors as a result we saw some uptick in this counter as well so definitely watching out on all these counters on the back of the news flow as well as brokerage report that we have received today all right thanks very much uh, for all those talks uh, uh, of course pp fintech we saw there comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise plant your feet solid into the ground decide your own limits and then break right through them become something more it's my time to rise